Hey, welcome to Flutetronic. Up now we're going to do another new instrument look. This is a very special kind of drone flute, sort of a drone flute, from Rich Dubay. Uh, his website is Northern Spirit Flutes. Now, this is a very special uh, kind of offering. It's actually not listed on his website. Uh, so if you want one of these, uh, you may have to use special order. Um, it's made out of ABS plastic or resin. It does have uh, typical slow air chambers. Uh, you'll notice that there are six holes on each side. So this is actually a dual flute um, tuned in the key of A, mid A, and then a high D. So these are tuned a fourth apart. So a lot of um, interesting combinations and uh, opportunity for drone play or just extending the range. Now, we won't get into all that today because I'm. this is almost an unboxing video. <laughs> I uh, got it earlier in the week and really have not played with it much. Um, but the other special thing about this is that each side is actually in the indigenous tuning. So this is a different tuning than I'm used to. Um, it's actually a diatonic, major diatonic, um, which you would think uh, would be like whistle tuning, six hole whistle, but it's a little bit different. So let's go ahead and just take a listen and we'll uh, Check out the uh, major scale from the low flute, the A flute. So the difference between, say, a whistle fingering and this one is, is it's all the same until you get to the, the top couple of notes. So I think of whistles and well, I'm going to think of this as a whistle, really. So I think of whistles as if the bottom note is a C. So if I was thinking in those terms, the notes would just be the white keys on the piano, C, D, E, F, G, C, D, E, F, G, and then A. Now, if this were a whistle, I'd lift that last finger and I would get a B note, but I don't. Here I get the octave, uh, what I would call a C note. Now, you can get the B note with a cross fingering, so you just put the uh, your middle finger down and you'll get that B note. So a little bit different tuning uh, to get used to, but if you're used to uh, either diatonic naff or uh, whistle, tune, whistle fingering, um, I think you'll get used to it pretty quick. Now in terms of half holes and things, um, it does half hole pretty well. Uh, and then I haven't figured out all the cross ring notes. We'll take a look at that later, but uh, just to give you an idea of a, say a chromatic scale. So yeah, I haven't figured out the, the B flat there. I'll, I'll, I'll play around with that a little bit more. Um, but it is, it is chromatic. I think it's this one. Yeah, just two fingers there. Um, let's just, for grins, let's try some kind of typical half holing or typical cross bringer and, and see what works. So yeah, E flat is doesn't really work. It's, it's pretty sharp. You kind of have to have a hole there.
So yeah, pretty uh, works pretty well. Some of those fingerings I'll have to write down and um, get used to those. But yeah, the cross fingerings pretty much work to get a um, chromatic scale, except for the E flat. It's not really a good cross fingering there. Unless you are okay with that note being about 30 cents sharp. <laughs> I'm looking at my tuner over here. Uh, but you can just half hold that. And that works pretty well. All right, so that's the low side. Um, let's check out the high side. There, the uh, the the uh, cross bearing does work uh, for that minor third. Yeah, so the fingering is a little bit different, low to high. If you're trying to get fancy with um, uh, in between notes and all, uh, but just the straight diatonic notes are very easy to get used to. All right, so what else can we do with this? Well. I don't know. <laughs> As a drone flute, um, I think I'm going to want to get some hole plugs and, and, and so forth and kind of play around with it that way. Uh, but you can just try uh, playing both together. Let's see what that does. Pretty cool. Um, so yeah, if you're, you're wrapping things, you could probably get um, some some different combinations there. What if we try just a drone, the high drone, and play the lower flute? Let's see what that does. See, the common note is what I would call the G on the high side. It's actually the <laughs> C on the low side was be very confusing with um, transpositions and all. Um, so that that's your common tone. Cool. Uh, let's try the other way. So pretty cool. Now, um, let's say you were trying to play and kind of an extended melody. How would that work? So if this is a C major scale, and this is a fourth higher, so if I try to treat this as an F, does that work? Right, so <laughs> 
but you can't continue the C major scale on the high side because it's really an F. So you have to pretend it's a G major scale to continue. We'll see what that does. <laughs> Yeah, so, so that's kind of tricky if you're trying to get a, a, a full C scale. You can you can do it. So you'll go from what I would say is um, C four, C five, and then from there you could go. To the F, yeah. So it would be um, basically you can get an octave and, and I don't know. <laughs> so all right, so we'll, we will um, kind of study this a little bit more and get used to the possibilities here. But I think you can see it's a very versatile instrument, and just trying to wrap your head around all the possibilities. It's going to take a little bit of time to uh, get used to. Um, so stay tuned for more on this. If you want to get uh, a little bit better idea of this, I'll give you a link to uh, Johnny Lefford's Star Spangled Banner on, on this flute. Uh, so yeah, very versatile, and uh, we'll get some, some new tunes and uh, real tunes on it soon. Uh, till then, catch you next time.